uh, Bouti, he died just yesterday. That was my question. Is that true that he died yesterday? I have said no. Al Bouti and a similar rule, uh, ulama, similar school like Al Bouti, who accept to be next to those rulers in the Muslim land, their muftis and their imams and their qadi, the one who do dua for them, the one who support them, the one who is a minister with them, those scholars, they passed away long, long time ago. Just they bury him yesterday. The man is dead before. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, istajibu illahi wa rasooli ida da'aku lima yuhiyuhu. Oh, you mu'mineen. Respond to Allah and his prophet when he call you to what make you alive. And those ulama have neglected the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they are not alive. They pass away when they do khiyan for Allah and his prophet. When they give support to those rulers who destroy Islam. When they do align with, with those rulers who support the kuffar. They are die when walk with the ruler against the umbra. When they are not the carry the flag of the deen. When they, are, they have sold the deen to have some money to have a photo with a president or a king or, a, or an emir. Those ulama passed away long, long time ago. Just read the Quran, the hadith about the true ulama, and put the definition of the ulama, those one who have the taqwa and the knowledge. Knowledge, anyone can get it. Anyone can spend four, five, six years. You will have memorized everything, but that is not the ilm shar'i. That's not, it's not the one who will be, yani, yuhshar yawm al qiyam with the Prophet the one who will do that, the one who has that knowledge and implemented his life, and he's really a muttaqi, he's away from those corrupted ruler. That's why the man is passed away a long, long time ago. And again, little Assad help you now. Little Assad support you now. Half of the Assad is there, you will face him in front of you. Let him. And tomorrow you will stop and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the mothers, the fathers, the grandfathers, the children who was killed by Assad. And you are supporting that killer. You will challenge them, they will challenge you. The Assad will distinguish himself with you. He will say, look, I have nothing to do with you. And those rule, those ulama, they will, yani, they will say for those, their follower today, look, we have nothing to do with you. Everyone says, leave me alone. That's why Hatta, those ones on the ground who support that alim or that sheikh or that mufti, they have really to review their position. If really they are fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The knowledge of Islam is in the Quran, the Sunnah. And no one should use that to his benefit. No one should use that to have a position. No one should use that just to have a money. No one should use that to support those rulers who are the enemy of Islam and Muslims. That's why whoever, whatever his knowledge, whatever his name, whatever his position, if you see any one of those people close to those rulers in the Muslim land, put not only one question mark, put million question mark on his deen, his knowledge is taqwa. Don't say uh, he has 50 books, 6 books, 70 books. Anyone of you can write 50 books. Go to the Google, collect some information, and you will add. Go to the university, four, five, six years, 10 years, you will write anything. It is not a magic to do that. But the magic is to implement that knowledge in the reality. Anyway, but my topic today was really in short. I say we as a Muslim, especially the youth here, when everything big happened in the Muslim land, and that's a good sign that the Ummah is alive, everyone run to you, Sheikh, what can I do? What should we do? Our oh, brother in Burma, our brother in Syria, in Iraq, in Kashmir, Shishan, Palestine, look, especially when it's hot. And everyone run, what should I do? What can I do? And you will see, yes, Muslims are sincere, they want to do something, that's beautiful. But always we have, I want to give answer for this question. We are great ummah, big ummah, large ummah. No one can do the same. No one can go somewhere, the whole ummah goes somewhere. But at least the whole ummah has to carry a duty. The whole ummah has to do the job, the big job. And the big job is in four levels. One of the levels is any big issue in the Muslim land, any, uh, uh, let me say, uh, yes, big issue like Palestine, Kashmir, Shishan, the unit of the Ummah, those big issues, we have always to take them to the roots, which is the Quran, the Sunnah, the Shari, the Shari debate. The big challenge that the rule, that the enemy of Islam, they want to link you with not the Shari issue. They want to take those Christians, well, like Kashmir is just not more than, they are Hindus, they want to be separate and independent, and the international law don't allow them, and they want to take you to that debate, international law, UN 47, 48, and they want to take your attention from the Shari. 
فلسطين والله it's the اللاجئين the refugees the land the water 67 الأقصر uh, they want to take you to 50 issues which is but the origin the حكم شرعي it's a Muslim land occupied by kuffar and the حكم شرعي is to carry jihad to free the land very simple but they want to take your attention somewhere else and you can't take any example إذن هي our role is to take, يعني to, to bring all issues to connect them with the Sharia, with قال الله قال الرسول ذا حكم شرعي, and to create awareness about that in the Ummah, because as long as we do the connection with the Sharia, what matter of time we spend, one day we will solve that problem. But if we forget the roots, the Sharia, uh, حكم شرعي, it's a matter of time to forget it. That's one. Secondly, the political awareness, political work, political struggle. It is, I know many Muslims put down the political struggle. The political struggle is the implementation of the fiqh and shari'i struggle. You can speak about shari'i a thousand years, but if you don't have a plan to establish it, to implement it, then it has no, no, yani no, no value. The political struggle is the one who wants to move from theoretical to, to implementation. That's why we have to carry that struggle. That means we have to challenge those old rulers. Their puppets, their shukha, their ulama, their uh, plans, their, uh, what they are doing, we have to challenge it, to expose it. What's happening now in Syria, uh, the, 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 the national uh, council, whatever, the new government, we have to expose that, to challenge it's part of the struggle. Because if we don't do that, they bring a shaykh, some, uh, some hadith, he will trick the people. And that's why we see many Muslims support those rulers, those shukha, those uh, national councils. Even the political struggle is very important to expose what's wrong, and to implement what's right. And when we have the political struggle truly, we will put a question. If you say a Palestinian Islamic issue, how can you, as a politician, as a sheikh, as a alim, put your hand with Europe or with America to solve your problem? Is that a joke? You say that's an Islamic issue, and tomorrow you ask Europe and America to solve that problem for you. What kind of joke is that? Even the political struggle is very important. You build awareness in the Ummah, the Ummah become a life. That will push them to do accounting and muhasaba, amr al-ma'roof and nahi al-munkar, that based on the Sharia, and that's really the political awareness. The third one, the second one, third one, is to do something. When a kuffar invade the land, don't wait. The Ummah has to respond. The Ummah has to carry the weapon and to fight back. If thousands of soldiers come and occupy your land, what do you want to do? Are you going to spread on them water and the drink or flowers? For sure, you have to do something. And the Ummah has to carry the jihad. And that's the basic knowledge where every Muslim know if the kuffar enemy attack a Muslim land, everyone has to take the weapon and to fight back. A man, a woman, a child, slave, whoever. That's a very simple hukum shari'i. Everyone know it. And uh, it's not only weapon. Uh, the struggle is big. You need the money, you need the knowledge, you need the political awareness, you need the support, you need to spread the ilm. That all has to be in the way to, yeah, to, 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 to challenge the enemy. Even the front can be very wide. But if you do that, you do that, you do that, then end of the day, the whole ummah doing the job. Don't imagine that everyone will do the same. Don't attack your brother if you do something else. As long you are in the same front, same struggle against the same enemy. And the fourth one, which is really the main one, there is a key. There is a key for all those big issues. As long as we don't have the key, we will be never able to solve those issues from its roots. In the last 100 years, we have many of those issues. More than 100 years. We have more than one issue. And every year, five years, we have a new issue. We was not able to solve any problem in the last 50 years. Not because we have shortage in sacrificing. We have sacrificed. We have spent. We have put money. We have put blood. Not because of that, but because we don't have the key. The key to solve those big problems is through Islam, which is not just theoretical world. It's the Sharia implemented in one land, one ummah, one state. As long as we don't have that one ummah live under the Sharia and the Imam of the Muslim who united them and use the all resources of the ummah, use it in that struggle, we will be not able to do that. Those struggles are not a party struggle, not a group struggle, not a mujahideen struggle. It is the ummah struggle. Your role is to take the whole ummah in the struggle. And that cannot be happened without imam, without khilafah, without Islam state, without the sharia, without the one ummah. That's why to work for the khilafah has to be parallel with the old three points before. If we do the four things together, 
parallel. Everyone had to do something. We will find ourselves, yes, we are going the right path. That's why your brother in Syria today, they took the key in their hand and they do the oath to establish the Khilafah in Syria. That's why the international war on Syria. Not because they want to have a small job, not because they want to achieve small things. They have declared no one to establish the Khilafah in Syria as start point, and after that it will spread everywhere. And the Kuffar know if they are able to do that in Damascus tomorrow, it's just a matter of short time where the domino will start from Jakarta until Morocco. That's why this big struggle. That's why the Arab rulers, no difference between Turkey and Egypt and Jordan and Qatar and Saudi and the Sudan, everyone, they are part of the struggle, not to allow the Mujahideen to establish the Khilafah. They are all in the same struggle. Everyone does his job. Different way. Someone wants to buy some people. Someone wants to push them away. Someone wants to kill them. But they all work with the Kuffar to prevent the establishment of the Khilafah. But we are relaxed. Why? Because the whole world is in the hand of his creator. Not in the hand of America, not the West, not Europe, not the Arab rulers. They are puppets. They are very cheap. They are nothing. The world is the hand of its creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ala kulli shayin qadir. Yes, it will take time, blood, but end of the day, if we are able to raise the flag of Islam, then we have done the job, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy with us, inshallah ta'ala. We will be happy in the dunya and the day after. Allahumma.